Dude, that works well. I just need a heavier ring. This project started almost a year ago when I was actually running in the rain right after a computational physics class. <laughs> so uh, in that computational physics class we were using a lot of random sampling methods. Markov chain, weird uses for random walks and weighted things, walks in large dimensional space and bizarre stuff like that. But you can calculate things based on random numbers if you have very high quality random numbers to start with. So, one day after class, I was running and it started to rain, and I was noticing the pattern of the raindrops on the ground before the ground was completely saturated, and just how randomly the droplets were distributed and how even it was, and thought, man, it would be really entertaining to try to actually calculate something using the randomness of raindrops, since we've been calculating things all, all of these pseudo-random numbers in a computer. You can generate a lot more of them, but they're less random than something in the real world, like rain falling. So, you know, it only took like nine or ten months, but a couple weeks ago, I finally built the first prototype that was able to detect raindrops, and yesterday, I was able to collect the first data with this. The Monte Carlo technique is a very common numerical method and it can be used to find the answer to any calculation where the calculations final result can be expressed as a probability so you generate a whole bunch of random numbers evaluate them in some statement and then the probability of that statement being true is basically the the fraction that you then pump back into your equation to find your answer so in this case the probability is that the raindrop lands on either the circle or the square. Imagine you've got two squares and they are of equal size and they're laying out in the rain. And raindrops start falling. The raindrop has an equal chance of landing on either of those squares. Or a better question may be which one of those squares is going to get hit by a raindrop first? And the answer is you have no idea because raindrops are falling evenly everywhere. Now, Imagine that you take one of those squares and stretch it so that it's twice as big. It's got twice the area. The raindrops are going to be twice as likely to fall on that rectangle than on the other one that's the square because it has more area. So the number of raindrops falling on the shapes is proportional to the area of those shapes. And that is something that is at the core necessary for the Monte Carlo method to work. Now imagine that you take that rectangle and you make some sort of bizarre jagged cut through the rectangle. So it's a really bizarre looking shape that uh, you wouldn't want to sit there and try to calculate the area of that shape. But if you let it sit out in the rain next to your original square, which is the reference at this point, and you find out how many raindrops fall on each of those shapes, you can get a rough estimate for the area just based on how many raindrops hit it. No matter what the shape, no matter how crazy it is, um, the number of raindrops that fall in that shape is going to be proportional to that shape's area. That's all that I'm doing here. I have two different shapes, and the number of raindrops falling in each shape is basically given a whole lot of raindrops equivalent to the area of that shape, which means that you can calculate pi because you're dealing with the relative area of a circle and a square. In this case, I have worked my hardest, of course, sanding it by hand, but I've attempted to get the diameter of the circle equal to the edge length of the square, which means if the area of the circle is pi r squared and the area of the square is l squared, as like one side, then the area of the square is actually d squared using the circles units because the diameter of the circle and the edge length of the square are the same which means that if you want to put them in the exact same terms you've got to pull out an extra factor of four because d squared is actually two r squared which becomes four r squared and um, the area of the square is four r squared and the area of the circle is pi r squared so the relative number of raindrops that hit each, the relative difference in their areas, is 4 over pi. The real problem with the Monte Carlo method for these two-dimensional systems 
is that it takes a really long time to converge. It's a really slow algorithm. So the estimate of the solution as you add more and more data is going to wander. It's going to go well above the actual value and well below the actual value. And it is eventually going to sort of settle. And it's settling because as you have more data already logged, every additional data point, it's like you're averaging one number into a thousand numbers, and then you're averaging one number into ten thousand numbers. That one number becomes less and less effective at moving the average as the bulk of data gets larger. So that's why the the estimate sort of stops moving and it does sort of narrow down after a while and you can see here that it basically starts to level off I wish I could have gotten more data for this particular run but this is actually one complete rainstorm the rainstorms here don't last very long and uh, it was a little over 2,000 raindrops that I was able to record so this is really cool I'm currently actually calculating the value of pi with raindrops falling on that apparatus out there Every drop makes it a little bit, uh, well, it doesn't make it closer to pi, but it gives me more data of, of which the average will be pi. Now, right now, it's at 3.18. So I've got uh, somewhere around 1,400 raindrops that have fallen so far and actually hit the sensor. So as more raindrops fall, that answer should get closer and closer to pi. That's mathematically how the Monte Carlo method works. But physically, it's actually a very simple rig, but it took me a really long time to get it right. It was like a, a month of, oh, it's raining, I need to go out and measure stuff. Oh, shoot, something went wrong, now I need to fix it. And it all boiled down to proper grounding and proper waterproofing. As it turns out, when you're measuring signals this small, uh, both of those are very important. So to ground the system, I literally have the ground wire that is attached to the ground on the USB on my computer coming in and it is attached to this aluminum rod which just drives into the ground and it's actually only effective once you dump water on it or of course if it's raining then that works too so you've got to have a wet stake into the ground I also have the entire underside yeah it's all wet I was using it the entire underside of this covered in uh, HGPE and hot glue in order to seal it all off because it would normally run and it would count raindrops perfectly for a little while and then one of the sensor wires would get wet which would add noise to the channel and that noise looked like raindrops which means that it would be fine and then all of a sudden one channel would just continuously get dripped on. The circle and the square here that are the actual like sensor plates are made of plywood and I actually made them by hand. I don't have access to a laser cutter right now, but even if I did, I probably wouldn't have used it because this is an approximation method. I want to do something and uh, approximate the value of pi, so I did it by hand. It feels a little more analog. And these were actually uh, mapped out with a compass and a straight edge on a piece of wood, and I sanded them down until everything reached the edges perfectly. And, or as perfectly as you can get working things by hand with a sander. And uh, the only real necessity is that the uh, diameter of the circle is the same as the edge length of the square. These could be really huge or really small or anything as long as that dimension is as close to the same on both objects as physically possible. That's the important parameter.
electronically underneath both of these sensor plates is a little piezoelectric buzzer and that buzzer is bit normally used as a speaker but instead of using an electrical signal to make a vibration you can also use a vibration to make an electrical signal and I actually use this technique to detect uh, someone knocking on a door for the the Dalek door project which is somewhere on the on my YouTube channel and basically this makes a signal whenever there is a sharp tap on one of the sensors so when a raindrop actually hits one of these plates it comes down and it runs into the piece of wood actually it runs into the polyurethane coat on top of the piece of wood and makes the whole thing vibrate and that vibration gets down to the sensor which ends up causing a spike on the graph and you can see that hitting the circle and hitting the square are causing two different signals to spike now it's a little more elegant than that because it's not just counting the computer is not recording the total amount of vibration on each plate it's actually counting individual raindrop events so the program that actually calculates the value of pi from all of the raindrops hitting this sensor is doing nothing except looking at the ratio of the number of raindrops that hit the square to the number of raindrops that hit the circle so it thinks that the number that hit the circle over the number that hit the square is supposed to be pi over 4 so if we hit the square three times and we hit the circle three times then six total raindrops have hit the system but most importantly three raindrops have hit each which means that the ratio of the number that hit the circle over the number that hit the square is one and it thinks that one is equal to four over pi so it thinks that pi has to be four which is of course not the correct answer but if you have random raindrops falling on this and you have enough raindrops that eventually the average ratio that you come up with will be pi over four and that's how you can extract the real value of pi calculate the value of pi, which I'm doing with this apparatus right here, and the randomness of falling raindrops. I like building analog electronics, but to call this thing an analog computer is a bit of an understatement. This is actually using the physical shape of the device and the randomness of rain falling on it to calculate the value of pi. 